Uh, the first thing I would say is that CGS, I think, set the strategic context, um, I hope, for you about what we, the Army, think is our agenda going forward. Um, I hope most of you will recognize it's quite a progressive agenda. I hope you will recognize that it's quite aggressive in its um, approach. And I hope you will recognize, and I hope that will come out during the course of today, that it is actually reasonably innovative. And most importantly, I hope it is going to involve most of the people sitting in this room uh, today and indeed a wider community, because I think that's going to be fundamental. You will hear, I hope, a lot about partnerships. Uh, and my contractual um, uh, policeman uh, make sure that I use the word very carefully, because inevitably I gather it has some commercial connotations. Uh, it is important we understand what we're talking about when we're talking about partnership uh, and the relationship we hold with all of you. CGS talked about the link between strategy and capability. And our job during the course of today is to try to bring that a little bit more to life. You will all have seen the classic photograph of a path drawn um, in concrete and a path across the grass where everybody else treads. And they're not always in the same space. Largely because the realities of the world may require more analysis than is put into the design process, or something changes. And indeed, there was quite a lot yesterday about strategic context and the fact that actually we do need to remain with a degree of flexibility. We talked yesterday about the need to fight smarter. That productivity word came up again this morning with the Secretary of State. Uh, and we also talked about the need to accommodate a couple of things uh, going forward. That business of integrated action, the importance of the divisional level, and for us, the importance of the operating at the divisional level, scalable in the orchestra analogy that CGS used yesterday, is fundamental. And it is vital that you talk about at that level because when you talk about trying to wield particularly the soft power components of our business, it is also fundamental that you're able to apply that reference status that accrues from having the hard power. So you will not find us in the current serving army wanting to shy away from the ability to fight and operate in an integrated way inside a divisional construct, inside a uh, NATO and uh, multinational uh, context. You will also uh, hear, uh, I hope, a bit more about the need to make the army relevant for the contemporary space that we're operating in today. And that need for flexibility and adaptability, much overused words in the past, we're grappling with still today. We also recognize that we're unlikely to get this right first time, so that notion of regeneration and the resilience to change, again, will be fundamental to how we design going forward. And the pivotal importance of our interoper interoperability agenda, again, I hope you will recognize, not least from the fact that we are a multinational uh, community sitting here today, but that has got to be a fundamental part of how we do our business going forward. And then finally, that notion of a need to operate smarter in the context of business. And certainly the last session uh, we'll have this morning, I hope we'll touch a little bit more detail about how the relationship with our commercial partners can be taken forward in a bit more detail. Yesterday, we had a substantial conversation about persistent forward presence, engagement, call it what you will. What we didn't talk about is how, in as much detail as perhaps we might during the course of today, is talk about how we can add more value and not be seen on the Treasury as a drain. Indeed, my personal view is that actually we offer considerable value for money and there are significant as yet unexploited opportunities in a number of spaces, not least in supporting the UK's prosperity agenda and its influence and national status. And I would ask of you that you think through those issues as we talk today. And then finally, just to reinforce the point if it needed it, that reference status is pivotal to our ability to operate in that persistent, forward, engaged posture. So, as a benchmark for you and as a springboard for your thought as you listen to the two panel sessions this morning, I would ask of you that you consider perhaps a couple of themes. The first of those might be 
how do we do persistent and sustained effort going forward? The second might be how do you ensure this is resilient to future change, recognizing that our ability to uh, implement policy uh, is a function of one, how stable that policy is, and inevitably that's a product of the world we're living in. How do we demonstrate value for money? That productivity that Secretary of State spoke of this morning, how do we make that work? And lastly, how do you demonstrate maximum utility? And that is a need for us to be able to blend the requirements of the contemporary space whilst preserving our uh, posture going forward. Indeed, there were some significant questions raised yesterday about where you were prepared to compromise going forward in order to satisfy contemporary needs um, uh, as we see them. So without further ado, I'd perhaps invite uh, Lieutenant General Chris Deverell to assemble his team on the panel and we'll crack on with the next sessions. But thank you very much.